Hello, my name is Yvonne. I'm the creator of the Facebook group, JK Lifestyle and Travel. Today, we're fortunate to have Linda Crockett. She is affiliated with the Workplace Bullying Resource Center. Hi, Linda, how are you today? I'm great, thanks Yvonne, how are you? I'm fine. Good. You know, I was, I was so eager to have you come and talk to us about bullying, bullying that takes place in the workplace. Mm -hmm. What can you shed light on? What is bullying? You know, why do people bully? Anything that you can share with us, it would be appreciated. Well, it's an important topic, so I'm glad that you're, you're doing this, Yvonne. It's really going to help a lot of people by putting this out there. Bullying is not a new phenomenon. It's been going on long before our grandparents were born. But bullying, adult bullying, what you see in the workplace today is very different than it used to be. It's far more sophisticated today. So it's far, it's easier to hide it. It's easier to do it. It's behind closed doors and the injury is therefore much worse. So if you're thinking that it's something like stereotype childhood bullying, you've got it wrong. I really want to encourage people to read some recent research on workplace bullying. Some of us call it psychological harassment. Some of us call it psychological violence. It depends. It is a spectrum of behaviors which will progress and become much worse if it's not dealt with immediately. Mm -hmm. So workplace bullying today, I mean, with research on it, 20, 30 years of research, people can look up. I've got 300 pages listed on my website if you want to read about it. Mm -hmm. But workplace bullying today is primarily psychological harassment. There, there is some physical aggression, absolutely, just like childhood bullying, but it's primarily psychological, which means it's quite insidious. And it's not always obvious. It can be. It happens in every organization, in every profession. It does not matter how educated. It doesn't matter how strong you are or how resilient you are. It can happen to anyone. Now, in schoolyard bullying, it is usually the meek and the mild student that gets attacked by a big brute, male or female. And it doesn't matter what size. Personality can be damn big, too. <laughs> but that is the image of a schoolyard. In the workplace, it is actually the opposite. Research plus, uh, I've worked with over a thousand people that have been targeted. What I see hands on and what I see in the research is absolutely accurate. It is usually very talented, very skilled, very strong, very dedicated, loyal, ethical employees that are targeted. So that's, that's usually the opposite of what we think. I know when I went through it, I thought it was the schoolyard bully thing. And I thought, well, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? Why do they keep picking on me? Well, I was quite relieved to find out it was the opposite. It's quite dedicated, hardworking people. And so that they, the targets that I work with are usually the type that go above and beyond the call of duty. They're actually, in my opinion, the, the employer's dream. Why don't we want ethical employees reporting bullying? I don't get it. You know, whistleblowers should be something we're proud of, not ashamed of. We are doing the right thing. So in the workplace, like I said, it can be quite psychological and quite, um, quite insidious. It is not a one-time incident. It's not just because I rolled my eyes at you. It's not just because I slammed the door in your face or I called you an idiot or embarrassed you or humiliated you. Mm -hmm. It is a variety of numerous tactics that are used over a period of time. Research will say six months, but myself and other therapists who work in this area, we see valley cases of three months or more. So it's a variety of negative events that take place over a period of time with some level of intent to harm you whether it's to shame you, shut you down, diminish you, um, belittle you, demean you, degrade you. One way or another, we're going to put your lights out, dim you, you know, either get rid of you or just shut you down. So we have to look at the word intent. There are absolutely bullies out there that bully intentionally with intent to harm you. We're looking more at that psychological violence side of it, where you're looking at narcissistic, 
sociopathic, psychopathic, where they don't care if you die at your desk. We're looking at that side. But that's not the majority type of bullies. The majority type of bullies are those that have learned the authoritarian leadership style, or they've learned the laissez-faire type style where they don't do anything about stuff. And they have lost that connection to their moral gauge that says their behavior is wrong. They've gotten away with it for so many years. Some of them have been trained to be that way. Some of them have been promoted and rewarded because they're that way. And they've gotten used to it and they got away with it. So some of us who are targeted are, are called too sensitive. Well, I say, no, we're not too sensitive because sensitivity does not harm people. Bullies are too insensitive and they are causing harm. And we need to put the focus on that behavior and we need to nip it in the butt in the very early days. And some of those signs in the early days might be abrasiveness, might be rudeness, meanness, incivility. It could be that conflict, personality conflict that we're, you're using that excuse and calling it a conflict. We need to address those. Those are the red flags. See those signs early because it will progress to bullying. Why do they do it? There's lots of reasons why they do it. So if I talk about what I just said was, there's an awful lot of people that got away with it. You know, there's a lot of people who just want to climb the ladder and they're going to step on anybody to get there. And I would say those are more on that narcissistic side of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. Some people were absolutely trained to be the authoritarian leadership, heavy arm, aggressive style. And again, it doesn't matter what industry we're talking about. This happens in every industry. Maybe it's more dominant in construction or oil and gas, but it happens in nursing, happens with teachers happens with doctors with policemen so why sometimes it's just a perfect storm it really you might be walking into a scenario where you had a leader who was quite lazy fair meaning he didn't he or she didn't deal with conflicts and there's an imbalance of work and there's favoritism and some people get vacations and some do not and that resentment just festers and festers and all of a sudden it's you know a mess sometimes it is the person has got a mental illness they might have a personality disorder. They might be absolutely burnt out. They might be going through a life crisis and they might be acting out with very abrasive, rude behaviors that progress if they don't get stopped. There's lots of reasons why people bully and we cannot fix it with one brush. We cannot define it with one brush. You need people like me who are specialists in this area to do appropriate assessments and then and then resolve it with appropriate measures if you have a manager that i believe that they must have an idea that bullying is happening why don't they stop it why don't they do anything about it because eventually it seems like if you're going to have a turnover and it's going to affect your bottom line the company's bottom line if you have to if you have new people leaving and new people coming in well, that's the million dollar question, Yvonne. If I had a, if I only had, you know, a loony for every time somebody asked me that question or a dollar, I'd be a millionaire. But there's lots of reasons. So one reason might be that that manager is unethical as well. And he's got something invested in covering up, right? It might mean that they don't know what to do. That might mean that they're afraid of conflict and they can't deal with conflict. It might mean many things. They're just not skilled. That's their buddy. They don't want to report on their buddy. There's all kinds of reasons why they avoid it. Denial is a powerful thing and it shows up in many ways. You know, justifying, minimizing, blaming the target or the employee, the innocent one. There's all kinds of ways to avoid. I don't know why they don't see the logic of the costs. The costs are, are multiple millions each year for not addressing it appropriately. But I often think that, you know, we don't want to report on our buddies. There's the old boys club or the old girls club that they're just trying to cover up, cover up each other's behaviors or they're quite ignorant and don't get the costs involved. Gave me so much information. That's basically what I wanted to, um, I really wanted to know. I wanted to know what characteristic that the bully has. I wanted to know what do they do? What type of behaviors do they direct 
to someone else. And I'd like to know, is there anything that could be done <laughs> short of leaving the company? <laughs> well, for a long time there, leaving the company was the only way to stay alive because some of us are pushed to the point where we want to jump off a bridge or we get so damn sick, we can't function. So sometimes that is the best thing to get the heck away from there. But today in some areas around the world, in our province in Canada, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, we have a law, a provincial law against bullying. We finally got that two years ago. We have a federal law in Canada against bullying as well. In some parts of the states and other parts of the world, that will come. It is not going away. So we can avoid it as much as possible, but I can guarantee you there will be a worldwide law someday against this kind of abuse because it's progressed to such a serious level. Uh, I think I've forgotten your question. <laughs> but no, you answered it. And what I wanted to know is what happens if a target leaves? What, hap what does a bully do when Jane, who they've been picking on for half a year, leaves? What happens then? What do you mean what happens? What happens to which person? What happens to the bully? What oh, do they do then? Well, if the person leaves, you mean like the target, the person that was targeted by a bully? Yes. Well, if the bully stays, then the bullying continues and somebody else gets targeted. That's all there is to it. So you asked me earlier, I knew there was something I didn't answer. You asked me, what do we do about it? Right off the bat, the minute you suspect something is going wrong, something's not right, that doesn't feel right, document, document, document. And don't document your guesses and your personal opinions and your emotional reactions. Document the facts date, times, who was there, what was said, and what was done, what was the impact on you. Keep really good notes and keep them in a, one place. Don't scatter them all over the place because that's going to impact your confidence and your mental health. Keep good notes. If you get a nasty email or a nasty voicemail, keep it. Keep it again. Keep it in one place. Don't leave emails on the email because they disappear. Print it off. Okay. And then you need to look at your policies and procedures. Does it include a policy against bull, you know, bullying and harassment? You should also look at whatever area you live in, what's your state uh, laws, mm -hmm. and you should put that together. Then there should be the process of, do you have a union? Talk to your union rep. Do you have HR? Talk to your HR. But also see a doctor because you want professionals documenting too. A medical doctor should be monitoring your symptoms, but also documenting for you. I also suggest if you don't know what to do, call someone like me who can assess with you and figure out what's the next strategy best for you because every case is very different and what resources you have is different and where you're ready, what you're ready to do is different. Everybody's different. So you might want to see someone like me and there's different people who do this work around the world. If they can't find somebody in their area, they can contact me and I can put them in touch with somebody. I wanted to um, ask, what are the effects, uh, the, the effects that a target would experience from this type of behavior? And how long uh, will they have to go through the negative effects from this type of behavior, the target who's received it? different for everyone, but I think it's pretty typical that we all sort of lay in bed at night wondering about, you know, trying to sort out problems, figure things out, solve them. For, for most of my clients and for myself included, it's how do I get out of this? How do I make it stop? What do I need to do to fix it? So I think the first thing to go is our sleep. The next thing to go is that, you know, we're, we're showing up at work tired, we're fatigued, we're losing concentration, focus, memory. The next thing you know, if we keep ignoring that sign, we're going to end up with anxiety issues. And then the next thing you know, we're going to have panic attacks. We might have migraines. We might have sore muscles because we're so tense. Some of us end up with gastro problems, you know, like IBS or Crohn's or diverticulitis. Some people end up with cardiac symptoms, high blood pressure. The stress really does eventually take its toll on our body. And typical for people who are targeted, we tend to ignore symptoms and we just sort of override it. I'll deal with that later. I've got to fix this first. We end up kind of obsessively thinking about what's going on and trying to solve it. So before you get on that sort of spinning, crazy thinking, stinking thinking kind of treadmill, you need to get some help. 
to put some pieces together. When we're super stressed, mm -hmm. our perspective gets kind of limited. We just start to see this much just to survive, just mm -hmm. to breathe. And we need somebody to help us see the whole picture because we get kind of clogged up. Self-doubt is another one. Questioning our thinking, questioning what we see, what we say, what they did. Did, I, did that happen? And it really starts to impact our self-esteem and our confidence. We, we tend to isolate when we feel vulnerable. That's really the goal, the, the bully's goal, is to kind of diminish you and get you isolated and, and shut your voice up. You mm -hmm. want to do the opposite. You want to get some help. You want to get some clarity. You don't want to isolate. Before you know it, you're going to end up with depression and you're going to end up with anxiety disorder. You might end up with suicidal ideation thoughts. And we need to get you before you're there. That's one of the common problems I see with people who are bullied. They wait too long for help. They wait till they can barely put a sentence together. And again, I want to remind you, this can happen to the strongest. Doesn't matter how resilient. If you've heard that saying, death by a thousand cuts, that's what bullying is like. A lot of cuts over a lot of time eventually will harm you. So get some help before you get sick. When I introduced you, I told your name, but you're very qualified. You're a facilitator, you're a trainer, you're a consultant, you're a coach, you're a trauma therapist, you're a social worker. Yeah. What else? I know I missed a couple things in there. Uh, I think you got it pretty much covered there. So I um, mean, put all that together. I'm an expert in this area. I've been running this company. I'm the founder of the Workplace Bullying Resource Center. I've been running it for 10 years. I talk to people all around the world. So if people have questions, they can email me or they can go to my website at abrc.ca. That just about covers it. I'm glad. I hope it helps people to know they're not alone. Yeah, like I, like I told you before, I wish I had known of you, known of the situation, the information that you told, it would have been helpful to me because I've gone through bullying too. Yeah. And it just helps if you know what it is that you're facing. Yeah. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you're not even aware of it. You just know you don't feel too good. You know, you, you know, an atmosphere that you may not be that comfortable in, but you don't know quite what it is. Oh, you're so right. I mean, it's, it's like you walk into a room, you know they're talking about you, but everybody stops. You know things are going on, but nobody validates it. It's like you're watching a train wreck coming and everybody goes, nope, I don't see nothing. Nope, nope, I didn't see that. And you're like, you're going crazy inside thinking, but I see the train and it's going to destroy our lives, my life. And everybody's saying, no, 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 shh, stay under the radar. Don't, don't rock the boat. And it's like, oh my gosh, it is crazy making but nobody's alone anymore. I wish somebody was going, was there for me too, but you and I are making a difference now. That's what matters. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and you're all the way in Canada too. Yeah, cold Canada. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. For providing this information being willing to share it. And okay. so it's the Workplace Bullying Resource Center. And this is Linda Crockett. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.